Hey everyone, today the topic which we're going to study is constipation. And for treating constipation, the drugs are called laxatives, right? Now, first of all, what is constipation? So constipation is when the person has hard stools, decreased motility of the gut, and decreased frequency of the bowel movements. So the drugs we use for the constipations are the laxatives and the action of the laxatives would be opposite to what happens in the constipation. So the laxatives would increase the motility, soften the stool and would increase the frequency of the bowel movements. Then the constipation is treated also by increased fiber diet, by increasing the water intake, by the exercise. Now the chronic use of these, of these laxatives can increase the risk of dependency and the electrolyte imbalance. So now the drug categories includes the irritants and stimulants, bulk laxatives, saline and osmotic laxatives, the stool softeners, lubricant laxatives, and the chloride channel activators. So the first category is irritant and stimulants. The agents includes bisacodyl, cinna, and the castor oil. And basically, we study these irritants and stimulants in the two categories, which are anthraquinone derivatives. And these includes, this category includes aloe, cinna, and cascara. So the cinna comes under this category, okay? And the chronic use of these agents can cause the melanosis coli, and they can also be carcinogenic. The, sec the second category, which is discussed over here, is the diphenylmethane derivatives. Okay, now let's discuss these agents first. So, first of all, we have cinna. So, cinna is widely used and uh, the active ingredient of the cinna is the cinocytes and it is a natural complex of the anthraquinone glycosides. It causes the ball evacuation within just uh, 6 to 12 hours. It also causes the water and electrolyte secretion into the bowel. Then the uses of the cinna includes, it is used to treat the opioid-induced constipation and for this purpose, cinna and the docusid both are used. So it means that the cinna is used in combination with the docusid in order to treat the opioid-induced constipation. Then we have the second agent which is a bisacodyl. And this bisacodyl, it is used as suppositories and the entire coated tablets. Okay. Then bisacodyl is a potent stimulant of the colon. It stimulates the bowel movement within just 6 to 10 hours. So in this way, it would inhibit the constipation. Then this bisacodyl also directly acts on the nerve fibers in the mucosa of the colon and the uses of the bisacodyl includes the acute and chronic constipation and it is also used for colonic cleansing uh, like we use uh, in the surgery, right? Then we have castor oil and castor oil does it breaks into the reculonic acid in the small intestine and it is very much irritating to the stomach so that is how it increases the peristalsis. Then this castor oil is contraindicated in the pregnancy because it increases the uterine contractions, right? And the castor oil has poor palatability and it can cause the GI tract adverse effects, so it is not recommended. Then the another category is the bulk laxatives. Okay, so the bulk laxatives they are insoluble and non-absorbable, right? And so these are basically hydrophilic colloids, right? Or ye kaise bante hai paas from the ingestible part of the fruits and vegetables, right? And then when they get into the intestine, then they form gel and they increase the water retention into the intestine. And in this way, this causes the intestinal distension. So here you can see in the figure that this is a bull laxative and it is insoluble. So so you can see here that it is not dissolved away, okay? So uh, what happens is that it is basically taken from the ingestible part of the fruit and vegetable and then in the intestine it forms a gel, right? And what it does is that we have water ki retention ko increase water retention, it would attract the water from the intestine, right? And in this way it would get increased in size and this would cause the intestinal distension, okay? Then the agents which are included in this bulk laxatives category, they are methyl cellulose, Okay, so methyl cellulose is taken from the plants. Then we have psyllium, seed brands, and the polycarbophil. Okay, and this polycarbophil is basically the synthetic fiber. The, now the adverse effects of the bulk laxatives are the intestinal obstruction in the immobile patients. Okay, and it can cause the blotting and flatus. 
right why because the if there is a bacterial digestion of the plant fibers so that would lead to the flatters and blotting now the next category of the laxatives is saline or osmotic laxatives right so mechanism of action of these drugs is that it increases the stool liquidity right they are basically non-absorbable and they work on the principle of osmosis so it means that when they get into the intestine they will attract the water right and in this they would uh, they would cause the distension of the intestine and this would increase the defecation so hence relieving the constipation okay now the agents which which are included in this category are magnesium citrate, magnesium hydroxide, the polyethylene glycol, lactulose, sorbitol, and the sodium phosphate. Now, the magnesium hydroxide basically increases the risk of hypermagnesemia, okay, and this is used for softening of the stools. Now, the mechanism of action which I've described right now was of these agents the magnesium citrate and the magnesium hydroxide the sodium phosphate is not used why because it has so many adverse effects that's why we don't use this agent now let's discuss each agent one by one so the first is the polyethylene glycol and so this is used as a colonic lavage solution in order to prepare the gut for the radiologic or the endoscopic procedures then uh, this is also Available as a PG solution, uh, sorry, as a powder for the solution without the electrolyte. And so this powder is used as a laxative as it causes less cramping and gas. Okay, then the next agent is the lactulose. So the lactulose is an osmotic laxative and it is degraded by the bacteria into the lactic acid, formic acid, acidic acid, right? When we have our intestine, then what happens is that we have bacteria and those bacteria basically what they do is they degrade them into these acids so they would form the lactic acid, formic acid and acidic acid, right? And what is the mechanism of action of this lactulose is basically that it increases the osmotic pressure in the intestine, right? And this would cause distension and would lead to the defecation. The use is that um, the lactulose is used to treat the hepatic encephalopathy as you know that it decreases the ammonia that's why it can be used here. Then the next category is the stool softeners which are also known as emollient laxatives or surfactants. It means that these agents would act on the surface of the stool so surfactants right. Now the mechanism of action of these agents is that it permits the water and the lipids to penetrate the stool. So this is how it softens the feces and allow the easy passage of them. The agents include the docusate sodium and the docusate calcium. They are used prophylactically rather than for the acute treatment. Then they are never used with the mineral oil. Why? Because ye mineral oil ki kya karate? Absorption karwa denge, right? So just ki se hamare paas kya ho sakta hai? That can lead to the severe lipid pneumonitis. Then it can also decrease the absorption of the vitamin A, D, E, K. That's why we use mineral oil. Ke use karte. Okay, then we have the lubricant laxatives. And mechanism of action is that we facilitate the passage of the hard stools ko by lubricating the intestinal surface, right? Or lumen. Ko sakte aap, hai? Then we have agents. Aayenge paas. So these agents are mineral oil and the glycerin suppositories. And and for us mineral oil, ke liye, there is an advice that okay, we should take it orally in an upright position, right? So that we don't aspire it or because that can lead to the lipid or the lipoid pneumonia. That's why uh, we need to follow this a little bit. Then the next category is the chloride channel activators, lubiprostone. Okay, so what is the mechanism of action of this agent is that it stimulates the chloride channel type 2. So as the name increases, uh, is indicating you that it is a chloride channel activator so it would stimulate the chloride channels type 2 and this would do what this would increase the motility of the intestine and would also increase the fluid secretions into the intestinal lumen so that would allow the easy passage to the stool and the other agents include the linaclotid, peclinatite, crophalomer okay so these are all the agents which are included in this category so now the mechanism of action of the lena clotted and the peclinotide is that they stimulate the guanylate cyclase C and this would increase the cyclic GMP 
and that would stimulate the CFTR receptors. This would increase the chloride secretions. Then the chrophalomere inhibits the CFTR channels and this is used to treat the HIV drug induced diarrhea. Now the contraindication of the lupiprostone is that it is not given in the child bearing women and the contraindication of the linoclotid and the peclinotide is that they both are contraindicated in the pediatric patients. Okay, then we have another category which is the opioid receptor antagonist and they would definitely inhibit the opioid receptors as the name is telling you. So that is how it would increase the motility of the GI tract. Now the drugs which are included in this categories are in this category are naldimidine, naloxogol, methyl nitroxone bromide and the elvimopan. Now the naldimidine, naloxogol and the methyl nitroxone bromide they are used to treat the opioid induced constipation. Then the elvimopan it is used to decrease the period of post operative ileus. The adverse effects of the opioid receptor antagonist include the nausea, abdominal pain, diarrhea, the CVS toxicity and those adverse effects which are very uncommon here they are the symptoms of the opioid withdrawals and the GI perforation. Now the last category is the serotonin receptor agonist. Right? Now what happens in this case is that these uh, serotonin receptors will stimulate karenge, and that would increase the acetylcholine and this would ultimately increase the motility. Right? And what happens in this case is that the longitudinal muscles hote hai, unki contraction would get increased and the relaxation hogi, wo kiski hogi? of the circular muscles. Right? And that would lead to the forward propulsion. In this drug aati hai, paas, that is Procalopride and we use karte hai for, the, for the chronic constipation for increasing the strength and the number of the colonic high amplitude propagating contraction HAPC right so that's all about the constipation or risky drugs ke baare mein or ab hum ski thori si dekh lete hai, what is the summary of the laxatives right okay so this is a summary of the anti-constipation drugs so the first is the irritant stimulant which includes the bisacodyl, castor oil, senna, aloe, cascara right then we have the laxatives which includes the methyl cellulose, psyllium, calcium carb uh, polycarbophil then we have the saline and osmotic laxatives which includes the lactulose, magnesium citrate, magnesium hydroxide, polythylene, glycol then we have uh, stool softeners then we have the uh, stool softeners includes the docusate then lubricant laxatives includes the glycerin suppositories and the mineral oil. Then chloride channel activators includes the lobiprostone. Then we have opioid receptor antagonists which includes the naldimidine, almopan, nalexogol, methyl, nitroxone, bromide. Then we have the serotonin receptor antagonist, sorry, agonist, which is procalopride. Okay, so guys, that's all from my side and if you have any questions, so you may comment in the comment box below. So, thank you.